Hey YouTube, Ron here for BBM Reptiles, and today we're gonna have the talk. Hey YouTube, Ron here from BBM Reptiles. Thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel, and if you're new, Go ahead, hit, hit that subscribe button and follow me along on this incredible journey of reptile keeping, specifically working with ball pythons. Guys, um, the conversation that I wanna put out in this group and start one, because I really could use your help, is what do you use for your rodent colonies as far as food? Now, the reason I'm putting it out this is that I've, I've been actually trying to fine tune cost effective versus what actually um, benefits me in the long run. Um, cause, um, I've been, I'm, I'm going to be real honest with you. When I started within the hobby, basically I was following the path of other people and how they were actually working out. And you'd be surprised that basically sometimes you might follow something that really doesn't work for you. Um, but because you're seeing other people doing it and your experience at all, this might not be the best. Well, that's the only example you have to go by. And just to take you back, um, what I'm talking specifically about is rodent feeders. Um, that actually goes back to the snakes. Now, um, the breeders that basically were around me, um, it was very, very hard to get um, Missouri Blocks, for get, just to name a, a, a feed brand out there. There's also Kent and there's also FMR. Um, I think there's also, there's another brand that I'm trying to remember what the name is. Um, that was also Har Harklin, Harklin, yeah. Harklin is another brand. Um, which provides rodent blocks and where I live basically it's extremely expensive to use them as a matter of fact there were even some breeders that would sell a 50 pound bag for almost $70 so when you think about it if you have a large colony you know it's hard to justify $75 a bag um, to feed your rodents so what a lot of people would do locally here is they would do a mixture they would find a mixture of for example of a uh, there's a, a, a pig grower or a pig feed that's called Red Hat. It has the same proteins as, for example, Missouri's, which is about 18%. And they would also buy dog food, big bags of dog foods. And they would actually do like a, a two-in-one and mix it up. Um, but the problem that I was getting with that specifically was that I was noticing besides the horrible smell that would leave in my, in my rodent area, um, I've noticed that basically the fur and how the actual rodent looks wasn't the best. I mean, like it, it kind of looks, <laughs> and I'm uh, and I'm sorry to make the comparison, but it looks like a, a rat on crack. You know, it really looks like I don't know if you remember the Dave Chappelle show. Uh, I'd be like, he'd be like, yo, I'll. Well, anyway, I'm not going into details with that. <laughs> oh man, I go crazy off of this. But um, the the rats are that bad. But you know. I always try to actually save, you know, save some money, you know, and it took me a few years to actually, you know, I got tired of it. I got tired of feeling that. And I mean, like, I'm just gonna give you a perfect example. I mean, like, you might say, you know, I'm, I'm a large person, you know, I'm not fat, I'm big boned, you know, but you might say I'm large. Now, what I put in my body, it's, you know, it, the the return of basically what what what's going to come out of it is not the same like for example someone who is on a on a high protein or a high vegetarian or one of those type of diets i mean like there's a reason why burger king has 99 cents hamburgers you know and if your sole food source is burger king then obviously your body's not going to react the best it should and i started thinking I mean, like, heck, I would love to be another Shane Kelly and hit 13 eggs off a single clutch, you know, and he was killing it. He was really knocking it out the park. And I was joking around with him specifically. I was like, what are you feeding? I mean, like, are you pounding Ovaltine into your ball pythons, you know, to get those amount of clutches? And, um, you know, it kind of dawned on me at that time when I was actually joking around with him about that during his entire season. So I said, you know what? Let me go deeper. Let me actually go deeper. And, and within my limitations, there has to be something more that I can actually do. So I reached out to basically the companies. I mean, like I, I went online and I tried to check in different companies. One of them basically was Missouri. And I was lucky enough to find that there was a local retailer or reseller here, a distributor locally. 
and instead of actually going to the food, the, the feed shops, um, I would go directly to him. Well, basically, it dropped it down from $70 to $50. And I figured, you know what? I'm going to invest in that because I want to see what the difference is because there has to be some type of difference um, between that and what everyone else was actually using just to basically save cost. And when I made the transition, I made the transition about 30, about three months ago, to tell you the truth. And I have to tell you, honestly, that transition of food, I noticed it immediately within two weeks. Now, the thing that I noticed automatically was the smell. I mean, like the, the, if you know, basically um, the type of foods that you feed your rodents, um, obviously the, the urinate is going to be that more powerful. And when you're going back to um, dog food, for example, the, the protein is a little bit over. It's a little bit over. Dogs, as a matter of fact, if you look at the bag, some, some even have 27 to almost 30% uh, protein and, and fat. And that's like, you would actually see some of the rodents were actually sweating it out. And that's part of the odor that the rodents were actually emitting. And um, I, was, I, I noticed that immediately. And the other thing is basically because I was using that mixture, some of that food would easily fall through the grates of where basically the feeders are. And do you know basically if a rodent actually urinates on the meal, no matter how fresh you just put it, you can actually just drop it in and you have a colony in there. One of them just actually urinates on it. That food's gone for the whole colony, even if you just put it in there. And that's food on top of food on top of food that you're actually piling up on top of your Aspen and your garb, my garbage bag, I'm talking to my specific situation. My garbage bag was getting to the point that I was actually, you know, my fingerprint in the in, in all this was a large larger than it should have been i mean like i know i had issues thank god i really personally didn't but i know when my garbage men would actually pick up the garbage they would dread when they would have to pass by my house to pick up my garbage because it's not the typical garbage a regular neighbor would have because of basically constantly cleaning it out that was a difference immediately that i saw when i started out with missouri now I was presented with another um, another brand, which is FMR, I believe it is. And I was really, really curious about it and I wanted to find out information. And you know, this is something that I always talk about. You know, you don't actually have to be big to think big. And um, that's why I love to explore YouTube and I like to see other people's point of view. And you'd be surprised when you see people that starting out and open up the new channels, they'll have the information that you need and they'll actually guide you out. And that's why I love to explore YouTube. YouTube, YouTube I would have to say is my Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh my God, if I threw you guys off with that, I mean, then, you re then I really am old. But, um, before anything, I want to give a shout out to, if I'm, I'm going to make sure I say this right, um, Zach from Sony Mountain Exotics. Um, I'm going to put the link in, his, in the description of his YouTube channel. If you can, just go ahead and follow him. I mean, like I said, it's new, to, it's new YouTubers. It doesn't matter the subscription amount, but they all have something to offer. And I got to thank him because I reached out to him and he reached back to me immediately, which I was surprised. And he helped me out with the questions that I had with that specific brand of road impellents um, for, for my feeders. And um, the thing that I'm getting back with is that, like I said, I, I, um, since I made that transition of road impellents, the feeding from dog food and pig growers to Missouri blocks, I found that second option, which is the same type of food, but my question was, how would it affect what I'm already experiencing with Missouri? Now, like I said, the, the benefit that I was having off of Missouri was that obviously automatically, it took like two weeks because obviously by the time the rodents would get all that out their system and we're starting to digest the new food, I noticed automatically out of the, of the Missouri, which is a 6F, it had that vitamin smell and um, the feed itself. And obviously during the time, you would see the, the difference in the odor. And as the rodents started producing their first litter, litters, you would see it in the pups. And the pups, their hair actually, they look so beautiful. They actually look like teddy bears. 
and um, it came to the point that it's so beautiful, it's hard to actually use, you know, when you when you take them out to feed them off to, to a snake. I mean, like, it makes me feel that more guilty. I mean, like, I went over that transition in the very beginning when I started feeding it, and I've kind of felt guilty because they were kind of beautiful, but, you know, it's the circle of life. I mean, like, I'm not going to get um, Zimba over here and start holding me over a cliff to explain the circle of life, but, um... Was it Zimba or Mazawi? I don't know. It's been so long since I've seen The Lion King. But <laughs> there I go again with the movie references. Oh my God, someone shut me up. Um, but anyway, um, I reached out to Zach about that specific feed because it even dropped it even more, the cost that I was actually investing with the Missouris. And I wanted to make sure that even though I was paying more using the Missouri in the long run, the cost was, I was actually seeing that I was actually gaining back because I was noticing it in the, the, the weight of the garbage that I, I didn't have to clean as frequently as I would as before. And my road is for a big difference. And going back to what I was saying, I, um, since I had to recycle my whole road in colonies, I basically, um, I retired my adult females and my adult males with the new pups or the new pups basically that were the products of the Missouri blocks to basically continue that lineage of basically a cleaner um, lineage I would say of new generation rodents when you do that it comes to a point that you're gonna be short for your snakes and I had to do uh, I had to do an emergency run just the other day and I picked up about 60 rodents from from a fellow a fellow um, rodent breeder. Oh my god. I I gotta tell you honestly Now I knew why I had to make the transition because as soon as he gave me those rodents It was an unbearable five-minute drive back home and there aren't fresh new Aspen and the odor is so intolerable that I changed the, old, the Aspen the second day. I mean, like, imagine that. And I guess it's because, like I said, the benefits of this feeder that I was seeing, um, that how it actually affects the, the rodents. And like I said, going back to the Chappelle show, literally the rats look like they were on crack, you know? I mean, like, literally and stuff like that. I had to tell them, no, I don't have, you know? <laughs> Oh, bad, but you know, it was really that bad. And when you compare those rodents versus the other ones and stuff like that, you know, I really felt that I had to detox those rodents, those those feeders. I can't, I can't, I can't feed them to my snakes, you know. So I literally had them on detox in the tubs, and they're shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking because I can't, I'm just visually seeing that, but they're like literally on detox because from the weed that they had to um, the Missouri that they have, that I that they're actually forced on now, um, it's exactly like that. So I have to go through uh, the smell and everything because I can't. I can't see it. I really can't. So uh, the question, the the question that I really want to put out, and I'm sorry, I'm just, <laughs> I find it funny because I'm just thinking about the uh, the after effect on that. But um, the question that I want to actually ask um you within YouTube, what what do you actually find a benefit when you're feeding your rodents? I mean, like. Do you look at costs or do you look the, at the long-term gain that you might get from what you're feeding your rodents? Because like I said, going back to that 99 cents hamburger and Burger King, if that's your food, your, your sole food source, you're not going to get the best, you know, returns from your own body. And I was like I said, I maybe, I, I can't say definitively, but maybe that could be a factor when, for example, a snake would lay a few infertile eggs or um, maybe some slugs. Maybe, like I said, maybe that frozen thaw that you bought, um, you really don't know what actually went into that frozen thaw or that feeder that you bought from someone else. You don't know. And, but when you do have control of your own colonies and your own feeding projects, what do you use? I mean, like, not, it's not, it's, do you look at the cost and you try to cut edges, but you're sacrificing um, or you're tolerating um, the, the odor or you're just basically um, fine tuning in whatever way? I'm just curious. I mean, like, I know in some pages, I see some people talking about put, putting vanilla extract in the water and that actually helps, but I gotta be honest with you. 
Um, the Missouri blocks, the Missouri 6F, it, elimin it eliminated that issue automatically. Now I'm making a transition with another food source and that's why I reached out to Zach because that's another option that was offered to me. But basically, I, I wanna get your opinions on those that are, are um, raising your own feeders. What do you work with? And how do you figure out which is the best way to, you know, not always stay in the red when you're actually going through this incredible, you know, incredible hobby. You know, when you have a passion so big and you want to work with this, you want to make sure that it, you know, it doesn't drain you. You know, it doesn't drain you and um, you get the full potentials out of it. Anyway, again, there I go rambling off. Guys, thank you very much for stopping by my channel. Again, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe. And um, like I said, it's all about sharing a passion, sharing our experience and making it even a better journey for the other person that's following right behind you. Have a great day and until the next time, I will see you in the next video.